And this video is going to be about music theory basics as it applies to a digital audio workstation such as Cubase or Nuendo. What I'm going to do is I'm going to break down music theory into two categories. So one will be rhythm and how rhythm values are displayed in the software and two will be notes. So the first thing I'm going to do is talk about rhythm. And the things that you need to know about music and rhythm are a couple of fundamentals. We've got bars, and then inside bars we have beats. Bars are kind of a larger measurement, and they usually consist of a certain amount of beats. The most common one, which is four beats in a bar, so we've got one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, and so on. With four, four time, we have four beats in each bar. We also have time signatures where there's three beats in each bar. So you might have one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, and so on. Another common one is six, eight time. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'd say that's probably good enough for us to start with right there. And know that today I will just show you four, four time as it is probably the most common one that you will encounter. And in 4-4 four, four time, we have four beats in each bar. And if we look at a bar in the software, if I zoom in over here, we can see that we've got bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four. And if I turn the click on, just by pressing the C button, this little metronome symbol turns on. And let's just have a listen to what we hear. So you can hear the beginning of each bar, or beat one, is accented with a higher pitched beep, and then the second, third, and fourth beats are a little bit lower in pitch, just to show you one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, and so on. So looking at the software itself, we can see bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four. If I zoom in a little bit further, we can actually see bar one, bar one, beat two, bar one beat three, bar one beat four, and so on and so forth. If I double click on this little chunk here, I can see the inner workings of this bar. So first off, let's start with whole notes. A whole note is one note that takes up an entire bar. So if I go like this and maybe duplicate this note over, we're gonna see that these notes are taking up an entire bar. If I then change my view here to see half notes, I can see now that we have another line in the display. So let's resize that, duplicate this one over a couple times, and each half note taking up two beats. The strange thing to realize is that a beat is actually a quarter note when you're in 4-4 four, four time. And if you understand that, then this all starts to make a little bit more sense. So let's change it now to a quarter note, which is the length of each beat. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four for two bars. Let's have a listen to that. And then let's change it to eighth notes. So I'll go change this value to eighth note. And you see every time I change the, the value, I see more lines on my display and more resolution in between each of these bars. So if I go to eighth note, we see another line, and if I resize this note to make it an eighth note long, now I've got a whole bunch of eighth notes. So let's have a listen to that. Okay, so just playing uh, two notes on for every beat. So that's why it's called an eighth note. You can fit eight eighth notes in one bar of four, four time. So, and then of course we could go on and on to 16th notes. Let's just do a few of those and press play. So that pretty much sums up note length and rhythm. And of course music is gonna be all sorts of different rhythms and different lengths of notes, but this will get you started in understanding what you're looking at in the display as far as those divisions are concerned. So this leads me to the next thing that we can do with music in this software is to quantize playing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play something in and uh, we'll see how that works. So I'm going to press record.
So what I can do now is open this in the editor and I can see the notes that I played and the rhythms that I have here. So let's just worry about the rhythms for now and we'll talk about the actual notes later on. But what I can see is I've got different lengths. So some notes are longer, some notes are short, and some of them look fairly close to the lines on this grid and some of them are a little further off. It means that my playing was a little bit off the beat. And quantizing is a way that we can fix notes that are off the beat. So what we want to do is we want to select all of the notes. If we want to quantize everything, I can select all the notes by going Command A. And incidentally, you don't have to have anything selected. If nothing is selected and you press the quantize key command, which is Q, it will just quantize everything. You can selectively quantize as well. So if you just want to quantize a few notes that are that are played a little bit off, you can just select them and press Q and it will only quantize those notes. Okay, so let's just quantize everything. And then let's look at the note values that we've got here. Okay, so you can hear some mistakes that happened right here. That's because my quantize settings are in the wrong place for those eighth notes. So what I would want to do in this case, you can hear how this note sounds a little early. Let's listen to that one again. And then these ones are off entirely. What I can do first is try changing my quantize value. And sometimes if you played something that was only eighth notes, you don't want to be quantizing to 16th notes because it might push the note to the wrong spot. And so if I look, look at this note here, the way I originally played it, I can actually undo the quantize over in the edit menu. If I go to reset quantize, you can see where I played the notes. This note looks like it wants to be over here and this note wants to be over here. But what happens when I quantize is they get pushed the wrong way and sound worse than when I actually played them. So what I need to do is change my quantize setting to something a little bigger. So we'll go to eighth note. Other times you might just have to move the note to the right spot. And that's as simple as selecting the note and moving it just like that. Other times, if you want to do a more global change, you can quantize everything and see what happens if you go to eighth notes. So watch what happens when I select these notes with my setting at eighth notes and it will quantize now to a bigger grid and push the notes to the spot where I initially wanted them. So now that is correct. That's what I intended when I was playing the piano. Quantize settings are a little bit strange and a little bit frustrating sometimes. You might play something in and then you quantize it and then it sounds worse. Sometimes you have to go in and refine things, but for the most part, the quantize is a great feature. All right, so lastly, when we look at these notes, you can see that, uh, let me quantize all of them first. So I select all, and I press Q. And what I can do with the notes in Cubase is I can resize notes if I want them to be longer or shorter. So all I have to do is mouse over the end of a note and I can make it a longer value or I can mouse over the beginning and change where the notes actually fall. All of that kind of stuff. This one looks like it was a bit of a, a blip, so I could just select it and get rid of it by pressing delete. Okay, so lastly, I'm gonna, I've got a drum kit loaded up here and I'm going to show you a basic drum beat and how they fall on the beats that we were talking about earlier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up this little chunk of drums in the drum editor. What I can do here is I can click in the drum beats that I want on certain beats. So we can see bar one, bar two, or bar one, beat two, beat three, beat four, and then onto bar two. So this is just one bar long so far. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click in a bass drum on beats one and beat three, and then a snare drum on beats two and beats four. This is one of the most common drum beats. Just look for the video called This Is Rock and Roll and you'll see what I mean, but we've got Bass drum on beat one, beat three, snare drum on beat two and four, and then I've got closed hi-hat is going to be on eighth notes. As far as music notes are concerned, the second part of this Music Basics tutorial, 
Let's look at the piano itself and see if we can make sense of this. The way most music works is that you're using a collection of notes in every song. You may stray out of those and you may go in all sorts of different directions as you might do in jazz or in classical music um, and in some pop music. But for the most part in pop music, we are dealing with a collection of seven notes in the song and that's it. And if you look at the white keys here, you'll see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then we get up to the same note. So this is the same note. These are all C's. And you can see that right before this group of two. But the notes start on A. And A is right there. So two notes down from middle C. And so this is an A. And then the next note, or the next note name is a B, which is right here. And we skip a black key. The next note name is a C. Then D, E, F, G, and then back up to A. The black keys have either a sharp name or a flat name, um, which gets a little more complicated, so we worry, won't worry too much about that. But this is A, this is A sharp or B flat. So if you're going up, it's sharp. If you're going down, it's flat. A, A sharp or B flat. Then there's B, then we've got C, then we've got C sharp, or D flat, and then we've got D, D sharp, or E flat, E, F, F sharp, or G flat, G, G sharp, or A flat, and then back to A. So those are the notes of the piano. Those are notes of all of our music. The piano is one of the instruments where it kind of visually makes sense just because all of the note names that don't have sharps or flats are white keys. So A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and A. And one way the software shows you these note names is in the editor. So if I double click on this editor, I can see the actual note names themselves right on these lines that indicate notes in the software. Where rhythm was working horizontally, notes are working vertically up and down this way as far as the note values themselves. So over in the editor, we can see there's our C right there. And there's a G and then there's a C again, an octave up. Anytime you are the next version of that note. So C to the next C is one octave. C to the next C is another octave. So this is two octaves apart. So here we have a bunch of different notes. We've got C, G, C another G, and then it goes down to an F, goes up to an A, goes down to a G. And with the music software, we can, of course, change those notes. Let's take this note here and select it, and then arrow up to another C. We can take these notes that are played, and we can hold Option and make a copy of that note and just move it up to another note. So now we've made, we've got two notes playing right there. And then maybe we'll take this note and move it right there. So this is how we can manipulate notes in the editor and take anything that was played and completely change it around. Creating music in a digital audio workstation is very exciting. Once you understand some of the basics, you can be a complete beginner with music and you can start creating music yourself. So I hope you're inspired. Get in front of the computer and start making some music.